All right, guys, we are back. Uh, we had internet outage uh, in that last um, in that last stream, so that's why we got cut off. Um, but we're back now, and we are ready to do some writing. So uh, let's get straight back into it. Going to have to be a bit quick today because we don't have that much time anymore. So let's see what's going on with the music here. Let's try and get this all working. And then uh, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. So if you remember, we looked at that whole puffer fish uh, bit of research that I did. And we're going to try and include that in the restaurant scene um, that is going on uh, in chapter two of this novel. So let's see. Is this, is this going to work? Is the music going to come on? You know what? I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to fret about this because I don't even have that much time. Okay, so if it comes on, it comes on. Right, let's get back to it. So, uh, where were we? The way to serve the next course, which I recognized instantly as fugu. I think this should be in, uh, since that's a Japanese word, we're just going to put that in italics, which I recognized instantly as fugu or puffer fish. A single drop of fugu poison uh, can kill an adult. Chefs have to undergo special training to learn how to prepare it. Apparently it's a delicacy, not that I'd ever tried it, seeing as how a single plate, single plate, uh, a single plate runs upwards of $250. Kuri Matsumoto must, uh, okay, so this is where we wanna, okay, so this is where we were before we got cut out, before we got cut off. So let's, um, yeah, and we were saying that we wanted to emphasize uh, the fact that this uh, 18th captain of the, the Yakuza Kyori Matsumoto, she has uh, these, you know, incredible red lips um, that are very, you know, vivid and very easy for the uh, audience to imagine. So we are going to uh, try and play that up in every, uh, in every situation where we can use that image, we're going to use it. So here is an example of that. Um, okay, so let's, uh, where's my mouse? Okay, here we go. Kyori Matsumoto, so she, you know, she slipped the first uh slip the first sliver uh between her glistening red lips right uh and then our guy you know he's he's clearly attracted to her our protagonist so uh he's got a he's got to sort of look away while you know i turned uh my attention yeah to the right to the puzzle box which uh, was the climax of the last scene the puzzle box uh, which I, which I'd smashed right we smashed that and the contents we weren't told what was in there but uh, we have this idea of the uh, of the rabbit of the rabbit foot so I looked at the contents of the puzzle box let's just change that to something simpler among the uh, debris uh, now We've got this figurine, little, little white figurine of a rabbit. That was the initial thought. But, you know, instead of that, maybe let's just make it something a little bit more almost mystical. Um, and let's say uh, was a um, something still to do with a rabbit. But how about a uh, fluffy white rabbit's foot, right? Those uh, people use those for good luck, right? That's a thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's it's even a thing in Japan, um, but it's a little bit more, yeah, like I say, mystical. Uh, it just lends an air of, uh, it just adds to this atmosphere, this very eerie atmosphere that uh, that we've been building up in, in chapter one and are going to try and continue into chapter two. It also fits nicely with the story that we've been, that Kyori Matsumoto is, is, is telling with the, you know, the tanuki and the, and this rabbit, right? So uh, the farmer had a neighbor, said Kuri Matsumoto, picking up her parable, right? So our protagonist has noticed uh, this fluffy white rabbit's foot inside the puzzle box which he was sent. He's obviously curious as to what that is. And instead of him saying, you know, the, an amateur, uh, you know, an amateur move here would be to say, um, you know, would, have, would be to have him say something like, you know, what's this rabbit foot, right? And then, and then you'd have Kyori Matsumoto saying, oh, it's a rabbit, you know, the rabbit foot is blah, blah, blah. No, we don't need to say that. We're just going to eliminate all of that and cut straight to the chase, right? We want to eliminate all the, all, the, uh, all the fat. 
and just get on with things. So Kyori Matsumoto, she's obviously just noticed that our protagonist has looked at the rabbit foot. He's curious. He doesn't know what exactly what it is. So now she's just going to explain, right? She, she, she's just going to carry on talking. She likes to talk. So that's the idea. The farmer had a neighbor, said Kyori Matsumoto, picking up her parable. And now the reader knows, oh, okay, we're going back to this story that she was telling in the last chapter, right? A crafty rabbit, hence the connection, a crafty rabbit who swore to avenge the wife's death. He befriended the tanuki and invited him one day to harvest grass for the winter. Harvest, uh, to harvest grass for the winter, yeah. Uh, on the way back home, the rabbit set the tanuki's bundle of grass on fire. And when the tanuki asked what the crackling sound was, the rabbit told the tanuki they were walking on the crackling mountain. When the flames burned the tanuki's back and he was in terrible pain, the crafty rabbit helpfully applied a lotion made of chili powder. And we can imagine how much, you know, that's, that's got to be painful. Right. The next week, the rabbi, the, the, the rabbit, the rabbi, yeah, the rabbit built two, uh, two, two boats, one made out of wood and one made out of clay and invited the tanuki to go fishing. But in the middle of the lake, the tanuki's clay boat began to sink. And when he called out to his friend for help, the rabbit only laughed and said, now the farmer's wife is avenged. The rabbit then hit the tanuki with his oar and both the tanuki and the clay boat sank into the lake forever. Okay, so that's that's basically the uh, the whole story, uh, and then the farmer and the you know the farmer was so grateful that he invited the rabbit to live with him, and they became firm friends. Okay, uh, I didn't say anything to that. I'd wanted her to do all the talking, but I wasn't really sure I understood her meaning. It was just like when me and Sabrina were together; she always used to talk in riddles. Except this is not quite right because a little bit before we said uh, Sabrina hated puzzles, right? Uh, we said that before, so we need to be... She can't hate puzzles and then talk in riddles. Uh, so we need to clean this up a little bit. Uh, so I'd wanted her to do all the talking, but um, this Yakuza captain uh, kept speaking in parables. Say so something like that. Uh, Okay, and we can still use the reference to the ex-wife here, just let's twist it around a bit, you know, at least... Remember, our guy has that caustic sense of humour, so we I'm going to play on that. Uh, at least Sabrina, you know, she she wouldn't speak in riddles, at least Sabrina would just come out and, uh, you know, call me... Uh, call me, you know, and we need a rude word here, so... Uh, that's something to think about. Again, I'm not going to, you know, use vulgarities because that's not my style. But, um, you know, let's just put in something as a placeholder. I'm just, you know what, I don't even know what it is. So I'm just going to put uh, vulgarity. Okay. Uh, right. And then we'll, we'll, um, we'll come up to that. Okay, so what was this Yakuza, right? This is sort of all the things that was going on in his head. Was this Yakuza captain offering me a job or was she just trying to confuse me with another test? One thing I knew, she needed me for something bad and someone should really write to the Japanese Minister of Children's Education and raise an inquiry about these folk tales. Okay, so this bit, it just doesn't work. Uh, quite simply, it just, uh, it doesn't work. It's unnecessary. Um, our guy has a short temper. Uh, so I think the best thing to do here is just, you know, he's getting a bit frustrated. You know, he's been called to this place. He's... He's not really sure what's going on. At a certain point, he's just going to say, you know, what what are you talking about? Or, you know, um, you know, if you've got something to say. Mm. And then Kyori Matsumoto finished her fugu instead of fish. Right and placed the cutlery neatly on her empty plate. The question, Mr. Sharp, she said, is are you a tanuki or a rabbit? Okay, we know, we understand the subtext of what she's trying to say is she's saying, look, you're either going to work for me or you're going to work against me. And if you work against me, you know, my bodyguard's over there. He's got the, he's got the gun. So let's, uh, let's just make this a little bit better. Um, instead of, that's a bit on the nose, what she's saying. So I have enough, uh, right, I have enough tanukis to deal with 
Mr. Sharp. Oh, guys, by the way, I found, I think I've got a much better first name for Mr. For Mr. Sharp than James. Uh, can you guys guess, guess what it is? So James Sharp is currently our protagonist's name. Anyone have any better ideas for what his first name could be? I'm going to tell you in about as soon as I finish this line. So anyone in the chat wants to give it a go, give it a go. Uh, right. I have enough Tanuki tanks to deal with. You know, that's the problem with spell check. You know, I'm talking in Japanese here. All right. I have enough tanukis to deal with, Mr. Sharp, she said. What I need, aha, what I need is a rabbit. What I need is a rabbit. All right. Okay. And then that really ends that, that sort of section very nicely. Um, there's a lot of subtext in there. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, what she's saying with this story, this parable, is that there are a lot of there's a lot of trouble going on in her field, right? In her in her section of Tokyo, she's the she's a yakuza captain. She's the eighteenth yakuza captain. She's in charge of Shinjuku, the district of Japan, right? And she's saying there is a lot of you know trouble going on. I've got a lot of problem people to deal with, a lot of tanukis. What I need is a rabbit to come and, you know, to come and, uh, and clean up the mess. And that's where, you know, and that's where our guy is going to come in. That's why this Yakuza captain has, uh, has called, um, James Sharp, James Sharp at the moment, but what's the better name, uh, to this place. Um, and we, and there's a potential here to have this, uh, the pr one of the problems that perhaps uh, Kyori Matsumoto is having, maybe we said yesterday that could be our protagonist's ex-wife. That would be a nice, um, you know, sort of a, a, a complication to the plot. Um, that this guy now has to deal with not only a Yakuza captain, but his ex-wife. And his ex-wife could be, a, a, you know, a power player uh, in Tokyo. Uh, something like that. So, uh, okay, so not James Sharp, but I'm thinking it's got to be something... See, James Sharp, it's it's an okay name, but it's it's not as fun to say as something like Oliver Sharp. Doesn't that sound just so much better? I mean, maybe maybe not to you guys, but I just think that's... that, that screams um, cool characters, you know, Oliver Sharp. I mean, just say that. Say that to yourself. Oliver Sharp. It's got all of the, you know, it's, it's got such a lovely roll off the tongue. You've got the V in there, which you don't get to hear uh, too much in people's names. Um, your, your tongue gets to do a lot of work. Uh, Oliver Sharp. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, so I like that uh, as a name. Uh, okay. So what I want to do now, again, we don't have much time because, um, because unfortunately we... Uh, we got cut off with the internet. So uh, let me just read through this um, this little section here and then I can uh, think about what, what I'm going to do tomorrow uh, as we write, uh, I think we're on page nine or page eight um, and, and, uh, and continue the story. Uh, so our guy, he's been summoned, you know, mysteriously to this green bird restaurant and here we go. The place was empty except for one table in the middle of the room the woman sitting at it looked up at me as I entered. She was young and good-looking, had those long lashes and sticky red lips. She smiled. I should have run straight out of there. But, the but two bruisers in cheap black suits stepped up behind me and blocked the entrance. The woman checked her watch and smiled her red lips. She motioned to the seat opposite her, and it really wasn't a question. I glanced at the fire door in the far right of the room. I might not have been as big as the bruisers behind me, but I was sure as hell faster. I thought about the homeless guy slumped against the dumpster. No doubt these two would trip over him if they tried to chase me. I joined the woman at a table but said nothing. There is a story we tell children, she said, speaking in Japanese like she knew I could understand her, about a troublesome tanuki who plagued an honest farmer for days on end. One day the farmer laid a trap and caught the tanuki. He tied the tanuki up and told his wife not to untie it before he got back from the market and made a soup. Cry and cry did the tanuki to be let free. Now the farmer's wife was kind and took pity on the little creature, but no sooner did she untie it, did the tanuki kill her 
and chop her into pieces and make a soup out of her. The tanuki then shapeshifted into the form of the farmer's wife, and when the farmer came home, the tanuki fed him the soup. The woman snapped her fingers, and from the kitchen came a waiter who put two bowls of steaming soup in front of us. The woman smiled at me. Go ahead, she said. I glanced at the fire door again. That's a children's story, I asked her, but my feet were dancing under the table. The woman ate a spoon of soup and licked her lips. My name is Kyori Matsumoto, Yakuza Captain 18, head of the clan Matsumoto and she who lays claim to the fourth ward Shinjuku of the great city, Tokyo. Oliver Sharp, I said, spooning my own soup. Troublesome Tanuki. I couldn't tell whether that quip got to her because she had about the best poker face I'd ever seen. A flawless complexion, like a doll. She continued to eat her soup. She sat tall and upright, all her movements precise, as if choreographed well in advance. I couldn't help watching her red, her red lips glide over a soup spoon. The puzzle box, she said eventually. I took it out of my pocket and put it on the table. But I said nothing. I wanted her to do all the talking. The first puzzle boxes were made long ago in Hakone, said Kyori Matsumoto. A safeguard for personal jewellery and keeping children's fingers from sewing needles. But as their complexity grew, the samurai and ancient warlords began using them to pass their secret messages. I received a similar puzzle box upon my ascendancy to Yakuza Captain. Yeah, I didn't realise the Japanese mob was so liberal, I said. Kyori Matsumoto fixed me with a look. It was a dangerous game to play, but I'd be damned. But I'd be damned if I let some woman keep the upper hand. Again, that's his problem with women. This guy has a problem with women. If, any, if anyone is just joining this stream for the first time, this protagonist has a problem with women. I don't have a problem with women. <laughs> it's, the, it's the protagonist that does. Okay, but I'd be damned if I let some woman keep the upper hand. I'd already come here. I'd already come running here like a dog, but I wasn't going to be anything other, but I wasn't anything less, uh, you know, than a, than a Rottweiler. It's, it's something like that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, some, uh, yeah, okay, something like that. Uh, it took me, then a Rottweiler. It took me five weeks to solve that box, she said, and in the corner of my eye I saw one of her bodyguards pull out a gun. You, Mr. Sharp, will have until I finish my soup. Again, she's just, a, that dominance is coming through, right? I snorted. Yeah, nice try, love, I thought. But I wasn't about to play her game, and nor did I have to. Her bodyguard wasn't going to shoot me while I was sitting so close to her. So I picked up my spoon and slurped my soup. Sabrina would have called me an animal, but the 18th captain of the Yakuza refused to be ruffled. I decided to test that cool exterior with a bit of shock treatment. Yeah, I'm thinking this is... Uh, we don't need another call back to the wife just yet. I think this might be better. If you imagine the scene, the bodyguard, obviously these two bodyguards are very subservient. They're, they're, you know, this is a Yakuza captain, and we can imagine, you know, the Japanese mob... You know, anyone under, anyone who's an under, an underling, uh, you know, that that whole respect culture, they're going to be outraged at this, you know, at this outsider, this Oliver Sharp being so um, disrespectful. So I think it's the bodyguard who's got the guard, who's got the gun on him, the bodyguard um, snarled at me. Um, Show some respect. But the 18th captain of the Yakuza. And here we're just emphasizing uh, that this woman, this Kuri Matsumoto, she is a robot, basically. She has no emotion. She is the ultimate in a you know, calculating machine. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's, she, she's not going to play... She's not going to give in to our protagonist's, um, you know, taunts. She is a stone-cold woman, uh, a powerful one at that. So, uh, the bodyguard snarled at me to, to show some respect. 
but the 18th captain of the Yakuza refused to be ruffled. I decided, uh, so, okay, so he's playing a dangerous game, he said, so he's going to say, you know, I still, you know, had a clear path to the fire door. Um, so I decided to test a cool exterior uh, with a bit of shock treatment. I waited until she was down to her last spoon, her last spoonful, and then snapped up my own spoon and smashed it down on the puzzle box, shattering the damn thing and busting open the contents. Sold, I said. Kyori Matsumoto didn't flinch. Again, she just doesn't flinch. This woman is impervious. In fact, I got the impression that it'd take a bomb going off before she might yawn. She glanced at the broken puzzle box, dabbed her lips with her napkin, and turned to her bodyguard. Tell them to serve the fish. Okay, and that's our, uh, again, full of subtext, um, which is just great dialogue. Um, what do you guys think? And then we're into chapter two, right? The way to serve the next course, which I recognize instantly as fugu or puffer fish. A single drop of fugu poison can kill an adult. Chefs have to undergo special training just uh, to learn how to prepare it. Apparently it's a delicacy, not that I've ever tried, not that I've ever tried it, seeing as how a single plate runs upwards of 250 bucks. Kyori Matsumoto slipped the first sliver between her glistening red lips while I turned my attention to the puzzle box I'd smashed. Um, among the debris was, was a fluffy white rabbit's foot. The farmer had a neighbor, said Kyori Matsumoto, picking up her parable. A crafty rabbit who swore revenge, who swore to avenge the wife's death. He befriended the tanuki and invited him one day to harvest grass for the winter. On the way back home, the rabbit set the tanuki's bundle of grass on fire, and when the tanuki asked what the crackling sound was, the rabbit told the tanuki they were walking on the crackling mountain. When the flames burned the tanuki's back and he was in terrible pain, the crafty rabbit helpfully applied a lotion made of chili powder. The next week, the, rabbi, the rabbit... Why do I want to keep saying rabbi? Isn't that interesting? Okay, the next week, the rabbit built two boats, one made out of wood and one made out of clay, and invited the tanuki to go fishing. But in the middle of the lake, the tanuki's clay boat began to sink, and when he called out to his friend for help, the rabbit only laughed and said, Now the farmer's wife is avenged. The rabbit then hit the tanuki with his oar, and both the tanuki and the clay boat sank into the lake forever. The farmer was so grateful that he invited the rabbit to live with him, and they became firm friends. I didn't say anything for that. I'd wanted her to do all the talking, but this Yakuza captain kept speaking in parables. At least Sabrina would just come out and call me a... Uh, and, uh, and call me, you know, a... Whatever, a vulgarity. You know, an idiot and something. Whatever. If you've got something to say, I said. <clears throat> Kyori Matsumoto finished her fugu and placed her cutlery neatly on her empty plate. I have enough tanukis to deal with, Mr. Sharp, she said. What I need is a rabbit. Okay, so now that they're, they're down to business and we're about to find out um, how, you know, this plot, we, we understand what the plot is now. Okay, the plot is that uh, the 18th captain of the accuser, she has uh, many problems in her district. Uh, we don't know what those problems are, but she has problems, right? Basically, she's got people, you know, these tanukis running around uh, and, you know, causing problems to her business. Um, so it's a very sort of, a, it's a mob story. There are these people to be taken care of. And she has summoned Oliver Sharp. I like that name. Oliver Sharp to come and deal with these Tanukis. Now, we still have to figure out uh, why Oliver Sharp is in Japan in the first place. That is all, you know, that is all to be se to, uh, yet to be seen. Um because in the beginning we said uh, that he was looking for something, right? I know why you're here, Mr. Sharp. I know what you're looking for. Be at the Greenbird restaurant at 7 p.m. P.S. Bring the puzzle box. So Oliver Sharp, he is in Tokyo for a specific reason, completely unrelated to the, or potentially related to the uh, Yakuza captain's, to this Yakuza captain's uh, problems. So obviously she's saying that if you help me, if you become the rabbit to my farmer, then at the end of the day, uh, I'll be so grateful that um, that I will invite you, to, you know, to live with me and become and we'll become firm friends. I.e., you know, if you help me, I will help you get what you want. Um, so perhaps 
Um, the other, another thing in that uh, puzzle box that he smashed, not only is there a, uh, a fluffy white rabbit's foot, but also, uh, you know, something else that's related to what uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Oliver Sharp is, uh, is looking for in Japan. So that's, that's all really uh, I have time for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow, I do, you know, providing the internet does not go out again, uh, we're going to be back and we're going to continue this story um, and, you know, we're, we're going to delve right into it. Um, so let me guys know uh, what you think of this story so far. Any ideas of, uh, you know, how we can reinforce the plot um, with what we already have, right? There's a lot of stuff that um, even without knowing it, we, you know, we can draw upon from this story, um, even though we're making it up as we go along. There are, there are nuggets to be mined, all right? The subconscious mind has already put down a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and if we just look deeply, we could probably, you know, find some incredible connections that uh, we didn't know were there. So join in again tomorrow, guys, wherever you're tuning in from. Thank you so much for all the comments, as always, um, all the questions both on the chat and privately. Um, it's really good that we have... Uh, you know, we're starting to build this community. So do follow. Uh, we want to get up to 50 followers as quick as possible. Um, you know, that's the initial goal. And uh, yeah, tune in tomorrow where I will continue to write before.